Many residents are finding it challenging to navigate Governor Newsom's new state guidelines in regard to coronavirus. So joining us to discuss the issue as well as the COVID-19 statistics is data expert Justin Hart. Justin, good morning to you. I promise you uh, we will not be having you play bingo. Uh, That's right. No, uh, no navel slips here. No, <laughs> not at all. But you are a, a data expert. You've been following this uh, very closely. And we now are seeing that San Diego County, we got off the state watch list. Now there is this threat that we could go back on um, because of the numbers. But it's all set on these tiers that the governor has put before us. Talk about why people are having a hard time sort of understanding uh, the guidelines and the restrictions where we're supposed to be. Well, look, when we've placed our entire bet now on the testing regime, we're going to have some very, very challenging days ahead of us. Um, when you're testing, it's very much like a professional camera. You have your ISO, you've got your aperture, and all of that goes to explain the type of picture you're gonna take, the exposure of light and everything else there. And if they're set at a specific range, the problem is that you get a lot of false positives, just like you might get a false positive test from a pregnancy test. That's exactly the similar situation you might find yourself in getting a COVID test. We know, for example, there were 77 NFL players two weeks ago who got tested positive for COVID. They retested them. All of them came back false positives, meaning they did not have COVID. You have the governor of Ohio who in the morning took a test, and then in the afternoon it came back negative, positive, it just goes back and forth. And the real problem is, this is what the New York Times discovered, is that when we look at the testing, they do another thing. It's like a zoom lens. They're zooming in to see if they can find the virus anywhere. But the problem is that a lot of these laboratories are zooming in so far that it's amplifying dead viruses. And that's what we find because a lot of our cases are from college campuses. And these college students probably have little to any symptoms at all if they test positive for COVID. And they can also test it even if they had it within the last 80 days because the virus is only viable within about eight days or so. So when we see these testing regimes, which keep us locked down into yellow, one for every one, three, every 100,000 in our population, we could test maybe three, 4,000 people here in San Diego on a given day, we test between five and eight right now, thousand people a day, and we'll already trigger that every single day just with the false positives. And that's why we're in jail, we'll be in jail as long as we keep concentrating on these terrible testing regimes. Well, could that also, when you're when you're talking about uh, zooming in and looking at the virus and ha still seeing the virus even after um, it's it's died, essentially meaning that you're not uh, transmittable anymore, uh, could that be a reason why we saw the CDC sort of take another step back and say, okay, well, after 10 days now, you can go back to work if you're uh, not symptomatic? Absolutely, they came out with specific guidance saying that you should probably only test symptomatic people. That's what we do with the flu. And we should probably you know, not mandate that you tie work to these as well because the virus is, is just so short-lived in that little space there. But it will test for a very lengthy period of time. And when we see these numbers upturn here in San Diego, a lot of them we know are coming from college campuses. It could be that these kids had it from wherever they came from months ago and now they're just testing positive there's also a big case we made that a big portion of these are false positives uh, because of the set the way that the tests are set up but couldn't you make the argument that well hey the cases are on the rise we do have one student out of the 440 that tested positive that's in the hospital couldn't you make the argument regardless of the specific numbers and the false positives cases are on the rise and we should we should put restriction on on these campus activities Look, one of the things that we've realized very quickly from data we've discovered this week from the CDC that the lockdowns have little to no effect of the spread of the virus. You look at Hawaii, you look at any of these stringent states that were locked down for months and all wearing masks, and it did nothing to abate the virus because the virus is gonna do what the virus is gonna do. If only we had spent all that energy to protect the most vulnerable communities among us, which are really long-term nursing homes and the elderly who have comorbidities, we would have been in such a better place. But here we are dinging everyone for that. And don't forget, we also get dinged for the great and kind help that we lend to our neighbors to the South. 35% of the hospitalizations in Chula Vista 
were from Mexico contact, uh, according to their own dashboards. And so we know that our kind uh, gestures to our county and our country neighbors to the south has really hurt us as far as the numbers go. When you look at San Diego County, and I know you pay close attention to uh, the population numbers, who's getting tested, our positivity rate. Do you think that the county is testing enough, that we have enough tests to really get a, a good sample? And would that, in fact, bring our fatality rate down? Because at 2%, um, that's higher than some other communities. Look, our testing regime needs to basically be quelled. Uh, there is no reason to be testing at this amount we're testing a lot of asymptomatic people. We're testing a lot of retests for work. And the challenge there is that when you have this mindset that cases are bad, everything is gonna be bad from here on out, okay? Because we have to change our mindset because the only way through this virus is through it, right? And you have to understand that not all cases are bad. A good portion of the, of the for example, the college age kids, when they get the virus, that is actually a very good thing in my book. I know that's a tough thing for people to swallow, but we have to understand that this is the only way that you truly get to the point where you can get back to normal is when people have exposure to this virus and they wane from it. And you can see we're getting to about, I think probably five, six, seven, maybe even as high as 8% of the population here in San Diego has it or more, and it'll just wane from here on out. All right. Well, Justin Hart, appreciate your insight on the numbers and uh, your time this morning, as always. Thank you for joining us.